The Dark Knight's Metal comic event was one of the best in recent comics, featuring a dark multiverse of worlds that are doomed and made from the nightmares of the main universe's characters. The comic event focuses mainly on Batman's nightmare characters, and it features seven alternate versions of Batman that compose an evil version of the Justice League. These members are the Batman Who Laughs, the Red Death, the Murder Machine, the Dawnbreaker, the Drowned, the Merciless, and the Devastator. And this video is going to go over all seven of these characters' origin stories. So let's start with the fan favourite, the Batman Who Laughs. This is the story of the Batman who finally kills the Joker. The Joker has pushed his chaos to a whole new level, systematically destroying Gotham, even planting bombs and blowing up buildings and hospitals. It's a tradition in my house to open one present each on Christmas Eve. Hmm. How about... This one. <laughs> he goes way too far, and the final straw is him taunting Batman who is paralysed thanks to the drugs the Joker has given him, and he then taunts him by shooting a kid's parents as they are coming home from the theatre. Which is of course an homage to Batman's origin, so he can really relate to this and it gives him the strength to overcome the drugs in his system, and he finally loses it and kills the Joker. But when he does, he discovers the Joker's final trap. It turns out a Joker nanotoxin was in the Joker's body, harmless in his cells until he died, at which point it was released, just enough to infect one person in close proximity, which Batman was. Now this nanotoxin is like an incredibly strong strain of the Joker toxin, and it rewrites his mind, making him into the Joker, which was kind of the plot to the game Batman Arkham Knight. Look at me! I'm amazing! And this body! I can't believe how strong it is! But this toxin has no cure or treatment, and has been at work on Batman for nearly a week, when he invites the core members of the Bat family over, namely Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl and Red Robin but not his son Damian Wayne. And Batman explains his situation to them, and as they are discussing ways that they can help him, he tells them that they don't understand, and then he pulls out two machine guns and kills them all, as the nanotoxin has already changed him, and he kills them first because they'd be the first to notice he was different, and he didn't want them to stop him or to warn any of the other heroes. And after he's finished them off, he goes on a killing spree, killing all of the Justice League members, in part using weapons that they've confiscated from the villains over the years. He turns his son, Damian Wayne, into a sort of Joker Robin pet, most likely using a similar nanotoxin to the one that transformed him. And the other Robins that he keeps on chains aren't actually the Robins we know, namely Jason Todd, Dick Grayson and Tim Drake. As I said, those three are dead. The Robins that he keeps on chains are children that the Joker has tortured. He tortures them by killing their parents in front of them, and then exposing them to his newest version of the Joker toxin, which of course sends them pretty insane. Now Batman had originally rounded them all up to cure them, but after changing into the Batman who laughs, he instead dresses some of them as Robins, and trains them like dogs to follow his commands. But getting back to him killing the Justice League, after he's killed the others, he gets to Superman, and he exposes Superman to a special type of kryptonite he's made, that makes Superman kill the members of his family, namely Lois and his son John. Batman then destroys the rest of his world, killing everyone except for him and his Robins, causing so much chaos and destruction that he's recruited by Barbatos to lead his army, and he is sent out to recruit others to join him as well, such as the Red Death. Now on the Red Death's world, this Batman wants the Flash's Speed Force powers, so that he can use them to go back in time and save his family by stopping them all from dying. The Flash refuses to give Batman his Speed Force powers, and presumably refuses to go back in time on Batman's behalf as well, as the Flash knows how dangerous it is to toy with time thanks to the Flashpoint Paradox, where the Flash did change time and screwed up the whole universe. Break the sound barrier and there's a sonic boom. You broke the time barrier, Flash. Time boom. And since the Flash won't give him the power, Batman tries to take the Flash's powers by force, and the two of them end up fighting one another. The Flash is kind of winning, even though Batman has stolen all of the rogue's weapons to fight him with, including Captain Cold's cold gun. But because this isn't working, Batman decides to instead use one of his own weapons. 
but unfortunately the Flash is still able to take it out. And then the Flash tries to reason with Batman, and Batman pretends to go along with it in order to trick the Flash into getting in close, so that Batman can inject the Flash with a cryogenic liquid, the liquid that Mr. Freeze uses to keep his wife in cryostasis. And this liquid manages to freeze the Flash's leg completely, meaning he is unable to move. Now it's only going to take 3 seconds for the Flash's healing powers to counteract the chemical, but that's all Batman needs to knock the Flash out. And when the Flash wakes up, he's strapped to a modified version of the Batmobile that was in part based on the Flash's cosmic treadmill, basically using the Flash as a power source. And Batman uses this, combined with the Flash being strapped to it, to enter the Speed Force. Now the Speed Force won't give Batman the Flash's powers, but it does merge both Batman and the Flash into one body, creating the Red Death. The Red Death then leaves the Speed Force and comes back to his world, and uses his power on Gotham City to end crime by killing pretty much all of Batman's rogues gallery. He then decides to use his powers to end crime not just in Gotham City, but in the entire world. But unfortunately, before he is able to do this, that world starts to break apart, and the Batman who laughs appears before him and explains that they're in the dark multiverse, and that their worlds don't last, they just break apart. But he offers the Red Death a place on his team, so that he can come with him and actually go to a world that won't break apart. And the Red Death of course agrees. The Murder Machine on the Murder Machine's world, the supervillains get into the Batcave and torture Alfred to find out where Batman is. And in their torture, they end up getting carried away and killing Alfred. Needless to say, this pretty much destroys Batman, as Alfred is basically his father and the closest family that Batman has. Now the rest of the League want Batman to move on, but naturally, being Batman, he refuses and continues to brood. But he does tell Cyborg that years ago he tried to make an AI clone of Alfred's mind, but he never perfected it. But he thinks with Cyborg's help that he could finally finish it. Cyborg, seeing how grieved Batman is, agrees to help him, and together the two are able to create an artificial intelligence of Alfred. However, the programming on the AI is wrong, and Alfred's protection protocols are way too over the top, and he ends up killing all of Batman's supervillain enemies as he can manifest himself into dozens of hard light holograms, and he spreads throughout Gotham City's technology like a virus, creating more and more duplicates of himself, and killing all of Batman's enemies. And then after finishing off all the supervillains, Alfred then heads back to the Batcave to help Batman, because he's decided that Batman's flesh is weak and aging, and it isn't strong enough to keep him safe. So he takes Batman's body and transforms it into steel, which is of course stronger, and by Alfred's logic can keep him safer and this upgrade turns Batman into a machine, much like Cyborg, only without any fleshy parts at all, and Alfred also removes most of his emotions, like fear and sadness. Again, this is done in order to protect him, as he was both sad and scared when Alfred was turning him into a machine. However, now that he's finished and has been transformed into the murder machine, he's actually quite happy with how he is, and when Cyborg goes and gathers the rest of the Justice League to take him down, the murder machine that is now Bruce Wayne takes them all out one by one saving Cyborg for last. And then after he has taken them all out, again the Batman who laughs appears before him and he is recruited to join the other evil Batman. The Dawnbreaker When Bruce Wayne's parents were killed in front of his eyes, he felt nothing. This isn't to say that he wasn't sad, it's just that he was so overwhelmed by the shock of seeing his parents gunned down in front of him that all of his emotions got pushed down, and all he felt was the need for vengeance. And at the same moment, a Green Lantern ring was flying nearby, and it felt his lack of fear and chose him to join the Green Lanterns. Bruce Wayne then used this ring to get revenge on Joe Chill, the man who killed his parents. Now at first the ring refuses to kill, as the Green Lantern Corps members aren't allowed to use lethal force, at least at this point in time. But so strong is Bruce Wayne's willpower that he is able to override this function of the ring and he kills Joe Chill. He then goes on to become the Green Lantern of Gotham and kills a lot of Batman's rogues gallery until eventually the Green Lantern Corps turns up to stop him, as the Green Lanterns are not permitted to kill, and they want the ring back. Unfortunately for them, they have underestimated Batman, who has managed to use the ring to physically manifest his inner demons, in what he calls the Blackout. And these demons then destroy the Lantern Corps, and after he is victorious, he decides that he no longer wants to be the Green Lantern or Bruce Wayne, and instead he becomes Batman the Dawnbreaker and then he too is recruited by the Batman who laughs. The Drowned The Drowned is the only female member of the team, and her name is Bryce Wayne. Now Bryce has lost someone she loved called Sylvester, 
and because of this, she hunts down and kills metahumans. Lee Sylvester was killed by one, and she is getting revenge. And when Aquawoman, a metahuman from the sea, comes from Atlantis to the surface world under a flag of truce, Bryce doesn't trust her, even though she does want peace. But Bryce is proved to be right, as Atlantis then goes to war with the surface world after the peace negotiations break down. And during the fighting that ensues, Bryce is able to land the killing blow on Aquawoman. But there are still plenty more Atlanteans attacking, and they even drown Gotham City in revenge for Aquawoman dying. So Bryce decides to have auto-surgery to augment her body, and has her DNA altered by using mutated hybrid DNA which basically changes her and gives her the powers to breathe underwater, have an accelerated healing factor, control over water, and she also engineered her own army of dead waters. So basically she has all the powers of Aquawoman and she has her own army. And thanks to this, she was able to turn the tide of the war, no pun intended, and thus humans were victorious over the Atlanteans. And then she too was recruited by the Batman who laughs. Now the final two characters' origins are the shortest, and a lot of the details are unfortunately left out in their origin comics, so please bear with me as a lot of information is inferred rather than shown. The Merciless In this Batman's world, Ares, the god of war, has forged a helmet that increases his powers a hundredfold, and he attacks the mortal realm, and a bloody war that lasts for two years ensues. Until finally, all the armies are dead and there is just Batman and the god of war left. Batman is angry that Ares has just killed Wonder Woman, especially since in this world the two are in love, but he can't be Ares as he is, so he puts on Ares' fallen helmet and gets the power he needs to defeat Ares. But the helmet corrupts him as well, and it changes his mind, and instead of bringing Ares to justice, he instead kills him. Zeus! Zeus! And then when Wonder Woman comes to, as it turns out Ares hadn't actually killed her, he had just stunned her, and she tries to remove the helmet because she sees what it's doing to him, Batman then kills Wonder Woman as well, as he wants to keep the power, because he thinks he can improve the world as a just god of war, and doesn't see how the helmet is changing him. So he then sets out to change his world and improve it for the better. But under the helmet's influence, he kills villains and even other heroes that disagree with him, until he storms Mount Olympus itself. But before the attack is underway, the Batman who laughs appears in front of him, and explains that no matter what he does on this world, and no matter what wars he wins, it will all be in vain, as that world is doomed, like all dark multiverse worlds are, and he instead recruits him to go and attack the world above. The Devastator in this world, for an unknown reason, Superman goes off the deep end and turns evil, destroying everything in his path and killing a lot of people. It eventually boils down into a fight between Superman and Batman, in which Superman is easily winning. As he says to Batman, he doesn't know why anyone thinks Batman would win, since Superman can freeze his heart just by breathing on him, or he can fry Batman alive just by looking at him, and he does cut off Batman's arm with his heat vision whereas all Batman has is a kryptonite spear. And so Batman responds by enacting his final failsafe, the Doomsday Virus. Which is exactly what it sounds like, a virus engineered by Batman that turns people into the unstoppable powerful creature, Doomsday. And it changes Batman into Doomsday, even regrowing his arm, and he is then able to defeat Superman using Doomsday's great strength, and what appears to be kryptonite breath. And after he has beaten Superman, Batman then laments that he could have saved everyone with the Doomsday Virus, but he used it too late. And when the Batman who laughs appears before him and tells him that his world will crumble to nothing in a few moments anyway, but he can join their group and show everyone on the Earth above what Superman is really like, he agrees in an instant to join the group, as he wants to go and protect the people above and save the world. The funny thing is of all these Batmen, in their own minds, except maybe for the Batman who laughs, they all seem to think they're actually the hero, when in fact they're actually all supervillains and they don't even realise it. And that is the origin of all the evil Batmen in Dark Knight's Metal, or at least all the ones in Barbatus' Justice League of Evil Batmen. Which one of these is your favourite Batman, and which one do you think had the best origin story? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemass Productions page on Patreon. 
Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.